Yes, apologies. My flight got delayed, so I had to switch to another airport this morning. Sorry for being late. Hopefully you were flying Flagstaff, Colby. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I'm flying into Phoenix actually today. All right, the recording has started. Claire, feel free to uh, call the meeting to order. Okay, we are calling this airport commission meeting to order on April 11th at 1.11 p.m. You could do the next slide, Missy. We will do our call to order. Commissioner Jackson is present. Vice Chair Jackson is present. Commissioner Curtis is not present. Commissioner Hanovich. Present. Commissioner Steiner went to the eclipse and is unable to join us today. Commissioner Waddell. Here. Commissioner White. Present. A council member Harris had a conflicting meeting. We have economic vitality director Heidi Hansen. Present. Airport director Brian Gall. Present. Airport programs manager Adam Miali. Present. I am Claire Harper, the airport communications manager. Our ARF and operations manager, Tim Skinner, uh, is at a conflicting training for the fire department. And then we have Ms. Yella Sainer, our administrative specialist, our reporting secretary. Present. Wonderful. We can hop right into the next slide, which is chair elections. So our last chair um, term came to an end and we have Commissioner Jackson as our vice chair. Both positions are open right now. And so a little bit more information about being the commission chair. Um, you lead the commission meetings. Uh, you have no responsibilities outside of the commission meeting. The meetings are run by Robert's rule of order, which I have printed out or I can send to you and provide any resources or assistance you may need. Um, during the absence of the chair, um, then the vice chair acts as the chair. And again, that's just running the meetings. Um, one other thing that maybe comes up is if we're not able to meet as a quorum, like we were asked for a letter of support, but we haven't had a quorum as a meeting. So instead of being, having it come from the whole airport commission, it came from our vice chair. And that's just the letter that staff writes. We review it with the vice chair um, and then they send it out on behalf of the airport commission. So that's really kind of the extent of what being the chair would be. Um, so how we go, Thanks for joining us, Commissioner Harris, or Council Member Harris. Um, so if anyone is interested, we can make a motion. Um, you can nominate yourself or someone else, and then we'll redo the process for the vice chair. Is anyone interested in the chair position? Sure. <laughs> I nominate. Um, Tom Waddell for the chair of the airport commission. Okay, do we have a motion to make Commissioner Waddell the chair? Could I just I'd like that? to second that motion. Wonderful, thanks Commissioner White. So we now have Chair Waddell. We need to, we have, we'll do a second, chair. then we need to do a vote too. So we did a first and a second, then we still need to all in favor. All in favor. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. All aye. against. Aye. Was that for Col Col Commissioner White? Yes, I am for it. Affirmative for Commissioner Hanovich. Wonderful. The vote passes. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, now for vice chair, do we have anyone interested? I'm happy to continue if there's no one interested in um, pursuing the vice chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Jackson. So Vice Chair Jackson um, 
is interested and willing to continue on for her term. Um, so do we have a motion for Vice Chair Jackson to re remain as Vice Chair? I so move. We have a motion and a second. Do we have a second? I'll second. Yes, I can. Wonderful. I think we have Commissioner Hanovich second that, and then uh, we'll open up it up for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes for Commissioner Vice Chair to, or yes, Vice Chair to remain. And thank you to both of you for stepping up. We really appreciate it. I will now hand this meeting over to our new chair, Commissioner Waddell. We then will call reading and approval minutes next. Yep. Okay. Are there any corrections to the minutes? I'm sorry, I led you astray. First, we'll open it up for public comment. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're going to give lots of grace today because you gave it to me. So we're going to give lots of grace. Um, no public I don't see any public comment. Uh, no announcements at this time. Now we can move to the approval. Okay. And are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay, if there are no corrections, the minutes stand approved. We would need a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? This is uh, Vice Chair. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm so sorry. You go. I'll second. This is Commissioner Hanovich. I so move. Vice Chair Jackson, I'll second. And then. Now, can we have. Uh, if there's no corrections, the minutes will stand approved or Thank you, call, for, call for, for a vote, vote to approve the minutes. Yeah. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The okay, minutes are approved. Now we'll move on to our city council updates so we can call on uh, Commissioner or Council Member Harris. Council Member Harris, you know, having several issues in the chat, so she's not able to, but yeah. Okay. So the Council Member is unable to join us on chat, so. Oh, I, think I've, I think I'm in. I think I've got it worked out. I'm sorry. Okay, do you have can comments? You yeah. Can you hear yes, me Yes, we now? can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, in terms of any updates from uh, the council, uh, none, I think, for um, that. Well, yeah, you all should be interested in all of this, but the water uh, rate uh, meetings are still being uh, conducted around the city. So that's probably something that we should be interested in um, at the airport. I'm not sure exactly how that works with the airport, but I'm sure we can figure that out and ask those questions. Um, let's see, in terms of anything else that's major that's happening, um, I can't think of anything that's coming up anytime soon. We're in budget retreat um, starting April. We've, we have another budget retreat in April. Um, we'll be talking about that. We had one a couple weeks ago. Um, I guess you probably all have heard by now that uh, Gentera got approved for the um, research park um, out by the airport or that land that's going to be used as the um, supposedly research park. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know all the details about that, let me know and I definitely can perhaps get someone to come out at our next meeting and kind of bring everybody up to date, but I'm just assuming that you all know about all of that. Um, let's see. Council member Harris. Yes. It's Heidi. How are you? Hi, Heidi. Um, I can give a quick update if you'd like. Um, I was on a meeting with Jen Terry yesterday 
and they're going to call it the Northern Arizona Technology Park. Okay. And then they're working on marketing right now to put an eight page brochure together. Um, I actually just edited the brochure for them today and sent them over the changes that I was hoping they might um, you know, implement. And then they are also going to be releasing a press release soon. Um, and then an idea that I gave them was to offer a small business card size with the name of the park, a QR code for a website they're going to be creating, and then on the back of the card showing the location so that for all of us and others that are dealing with the airport, we could hand those out, you know, just to when we're at our conferences or um, at a meeting or something to that effect. Um, there is a link to Econa's website on that brochure to learn more about the Northern Arizona work in the region. There's um, Fly Flagstaff, a, um, az.com um, website on there, the Discover Flagstaff website, and the Choose Flagstaff website. I also um, told Rich Bowen to reach out to Orville um, to talk with Orville a little bit about um, might be some complimentary businesses uh, for that parcel, um, things like that. So I think you'll see some activity and they'll definitely, um, Council Member Harris, want to come before the Airport Commission as they start getting more of these things um, put together. So I hope that's helpful and thank you. Yes, no, that's very helpful. You absolutely know a lot more about it than I do in more detail. Uh, but I think it's going to be, once things get up and rolling, um, I just anticipate that it's going to be really good for the airport. So, um, and I'm sure that you all, the commission will be kept up to date um, on everything that's happening. So, and um, Orville, I think you and Rich have a, uh, a connection anyway, or a relationship. You know each other from other places. So it's good that's he's great. reaching out to you. He called me yesterday. We're supposed oh, to get tomorrow. Uh, so. Okay, good. Um, and I think that's all from me that I can think of. I did I did have one question. It's not a part of my report, but am I counted in quorum? You are not, Council Member Harris. Okay, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes I don't make the meeting and I don't want it to be because uh, me I don't want me to stop you from uh, from meeting quorum. So Nope, you're just Council you're the Member Cap Harris. Yes. I'm so sorry, Claire. I'm I'm speaking out of turn and I, I apologize. Is there any update you can give this group on what's happening with the water rate study? Um I you don't have to do a deep dive, but I know that there's some upcoming meetings. Um I was wondering if there was anything you felt comfortable sharing. Yep. <clears throat> um I don't have the list of meetings in front of me. Um, and that's my fault because they're not on my calendar. They're in my email. I suppose I could try and get, well, they're on the city's website. I'm sorry. Uh, they are on the city's website on the front page. So, uh, if, if perhaps you could, um, make sure that the commissioners, uh, get those meetings in case they want to attend any, um, it should be coming back to council. Uh, let's see, what's the date? April. Um, I think it's coming back to us sometime this month uh, to vote on some things. So let me let me go back into the the meeting notes and uh, send that information to Claire or to someone so that you have exactly that. I don't want to give you incorrect information. Uh, but let me do that. I will make sure that I do that and get that information to Claire. Does that work? Does you that know, Council Mayor Harris, um, I am yeah. happy to send that over to Claire for her to send out. I don't want to uh, give you work to do, so I will uh, send that along. So no worries. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, can I have permission to see? Sure. I just wanted to add to what... Um, Staff member Hansen and or Director Hansen and Council member um, Deb Harris were speaking to. All of us should be very concerned and pay attention to these water 
um, meetings that are taking place. And if you have an opportunity, I highly encourage you to attend one. Um, this is going to make a significant, this is, there are some significant changes being proposed. Um, from my recollection, recollection, it's like 15% per year based on water usage of a household of 2.4 people. That's gonna change your water bill. So I would highly encourage you to attend one of these meetings, send an email to your council members and pay attention to what's happening right now. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think that's it for me, unless you all have, uh, anyone else has any specific questions for me. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much for your report. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, staff reports. Hi, that's me. Um, Hi, everyone. For uh, those online, this is Airport Director Brian Gall. Uh, we're going to be starting today by talking about our employments. So we have updated our employments. Um, we've actually gone back through. Missy and Claire have led an effort to make sure that our reporting was accurate in previous years. Uh, airlines, when they report employments, they report them in two different ways. And that's generally revenue passengers and all passengers. So Passengers who fly that get a seat uh, without paying for it, which might be examples of other air crews or employees of, of various airlines, are not counted as employments under the current definition that the FAA uses for in-plane passengers. So we've taken that, um, we've taken a look back at previous years and we found that it, there were some inconsistencies in how different months were reported. So we've tidied those up for the most part. So if you look back at historical slides showing our employments from previous years, you might see some slightly different numbers than we had here. Uh, that's because we did make sure that we adjusted that or showing just the revenue passenger employments to match the Federal Aviation Administration definition for that uh, for previous years. So um, not much of a difference and it really doesn't change the shape of the graph. But if you do look back at historical years, uh, please note that that's something uh, that you might see. So for this year, 2024, uh, in March, we had 5,869 employments, which is down a fair bit from uh, some of the previous years. Obviously, 2021 and 2022 were different with both COVID impacts and also with two carriers at the time. Uh, looking back at last year's numbers, what we did see was in 2023, we had six daily flights with American Airlines. Um, Immediately after that, you could see the American Airlines flights from 2023 dropping off as their flights dropped down with some employee shortage issues. We are seeing the opposite now, where our flight numbers are trending up. So I expect to see those numbers get closer to previous years uh, in next month's report. Next slide, please. For total operations, again, uh, we had a lower number of operations this year compared to the last. Um, operations this time. Time of year have a lot to do with winter weather. I think Orville might talk a little bit about this in his upcoming fuel flow presentation and FBO update. But I think my, this is just speculation, but my thought is that in 2024, we saw a lot of snow in March and some unfriendly days for flying, which did affect uh, the number of operations we had. Uh, compare that to last year, 2023, where we saw very low numbers in February uh, that ticked up a little bit in March. I think that that's uh, kind of the inverse for this year when we saw some storm impacts that um, didn't lead to the best flying weather for some of those uh, days. Next slide, please. And this is the new slide that we're adding to track our parking revenue. So as many may remember, or some of our new commissioners may not have heard, we moved to a paid parking system in the middle of July last year. Uh, so that system went from a free parking lot to what we have now, which is a paid system of both our terminal and our new economy parking lot. Uh, for anyone who hasn't been out here who hasn't experienced that, the daily rate in the terminal lot is $8 a day, one free day per week. So you pay for six days if you stay seven. And in the economy lot, it is $6 a day, uh, also with that one um, free day per week. So the primary focus of that revenue in the near term is to pay back the construction costs of the economy lot. So in the time that these lots were planned with two air carriers, parking was at a premium here, especially with the free parking. And we found people parking the landscape islands, people parking along streets, people parking in the forest, people parking in employee and rental car lots. Uh, so adding that parking capacity did 
uh, cost a little over $4 million for the new parking lot itself. And then we spent uh, some other funding on some improvements to the lot and the purchase and implementation of the paid parking system itself. Uh, so those are round numbers. I actually don't think it's quite $5 million, but it's a good uh, round number that we're targeting. So this just shows how um, that repayment is progressing. So less than a year in, especially seeing that July was only half a month, we are seeing uh, those parking revenues come in with $43,000 and some change in March, which is ticking up from what we saw in January and February. Uh, as you saw, those appointment charts, those are our lower months in the parking revenue. I think the shape of this graph is really going to closely track um, with our employments. Though there are some things we're going to um, talk about later on. So Council Member Harris mentioned um, talking about revenue sources, and that is one of the things we're going to talk about with budget later on in the presentation, and that includes uh, how the parking revenue relates to that and some changes we might make to the system. And um, I thought I saw maybe a comment or question from Missy. Was there anything you had to add to that? Sorry, you know, I accidentally clicked that Adam's having trouble seeing the PowerPoint. So I was just trying to see if there's any settings to adjust. Gotcha. Thanks for working on that, Missy. And I believe that is what we have for staff updates. I think that leads us to the next agenda. Hey, Orville, FBO report. Yes, thank you. Hi, everybody. Orville with Wiseman Aviation. Uh, I guess I'll start out with, uh, we were talking yesterday. I officially and very happily put our snow removal equipment away today. I hope that wasn't in case. Um, we talked with Josh, my operations manager. Uh, out here, uh, we're told uh, we received 106 inches of snow, which is more than you would have thought, but it's just like the winter never ended, it seemed like. We had a lot of small storms besides the three feet in three days. That's compared to 170 inches last year. An interesting statistic, this is the first time um, that we've had 100 plus inches back to back since when I went to college here in 1984. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, the new de-icer, it came in really handy this season, and part of that also had to do, besides the fact it was instant heat, um, the Type 4. If you don't know the difference, type there's Type 1, Type 4. Type 1 is a de-ice. It's propylene glycol. It's in ice cream. Uh, it's in salad dressing, cosmetics. It's, it gives you some gastrointestinal upset and everything. My company could probably attest to that when we've been <laughs> held it and digested it, unfortunately, when we're spraying planes, but it's actually not all that harmful for the environment or whatever. And that's what you spray on the airplane to get the ice off. Um, and then now we have what's called type four, which is a much more nasty substance. It's very jelly-like. Uh, we spray it 100% concentrate, and that way they can taxi out while it's snowing hard and take off. However, it doesn't even shear off till something like 120 knots. It changes the aerodynamics of the wings. So even like some of your lighter jets aren't approved to use Type 4. But regardless, it was very handy. A couple Sundays ago, we had a pretty good storm. It was the busiest day of the year so far. We reloaded the de-icer three times that day to get people out. So it's 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 helped out quite a bit. Fuel pools, interestingly enough, have been within about a thousand gallons of each other uh, for the first three months, which has never ever happened since I've been here. It's really unusual. Um, and we're flat with a year ago, so I'll take it. Uh, you always like to see more, but it's better than seeing less. Um, I've always said our, our business is Easter to Thanksgiving. Easter was a little early this year, but um, I think airport staff can, can attest that we're seeing a lot more activity on the ramp. It was pretty quiet over the winter. I'll be honest, I was, I was surprised we sold as much fuel as we did, all things considered. Um, last Sunday, well, I had- could, could, I, could I ask a question on that? Is the Type 4, is it, um, is it a requirement for, for the airlines or what what drove you guys to have to get that next, uh, that next uh, rating? There, it, the FA says that, uh, you know, you have to operate from a clean aircraft standpoint. And then, you know, if you're an airline or you're you're a, uh, a freight carrier or something like that, you typically 
you have to have de icing approved in your op specs. I had a tar sniffing for 10 years. I actually didn't have it in there. Um, Could have, just didn't put that in. But uh, type one works great, like if there's frost or if there's light snow. But as soon as you start getting like medium to heavy precipitation, it's not going to work because by the time you get to the end of the runway, you're going to have accumulation on your wings. Pull over time in heavy snow for type one is realistically about four minutes. In frost, it's about 45 minutes. And, and that's and that's mixed it a pretty good dilution because you 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 mix it and then you measure the freeze point, which you all, obviously always want less, but it'll still start sticking to the wing regardless of what happens. So the type four. Um, and it's becoming a lot more common because you have to have a special truck to spray. A type 4 is not supposed to go through a centrifugal pump through anything less than two inches in diameter and through 90 degree turns. I had, uh, back when we used to buy directly from one of the de-ice manufacturers, they told us that because it changes the molecular structure of the fluid. So um, this truck meets all those standards as a separate compartment. There's actually, if you go look at the basket, there's three nozzles up there. One for frost, one for type one, one for type four. So it's, and I mean, that's what the airline uses. They didn't always use it, they've used it in recent years. That answer the question? Yeah, no, I was just curious. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, um, Orville Chair Waddell, I believe Council Member Harris has her hand raised for a question. Yes. Yes, I just want to um, ask. Who takes care of the um, airlines in terms of de-icing? Do they do their own or do you do that? Do their own. Um, okay. And then uh, when we had United, they did their own, but my staff had to go to Denver every year and train on everything from a 747 down to learn, you know, learn their way. Uh, we aren't officially backup for American, but I won't say we've never helped spray American with our equipment if there's a problem. We, are, we also do the FedEx feeder here, um, and there's a specific training everybody has to go through for that. And if you want to get a really nasty phone call, just screw up and you know run out of gas or fluid and not get FedEx out on time, because they're very, very particular about that. So I'm happy to say I haven't had one of those phone calls in years, and I never want another one again, even though they're probably going to take a weather delay anyway. So, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, we had a celebration of life in the hangar last Sunday, which I don't typically do, but it was somebody I knew. It was a very sad situation. Um, we had over 150 people in attendance, including a local sheriff and some other other people uh, well known in the community. So as far as current goes, uh, Grant, my son, and three other line members are in Augusta right now working at the airport for the masters uh, this started last year our fuel brand was sent out an email saying hey anybody wants to go down and help with this because that airport typically isn't very busy not as busy as this airport the rest of the year and uh, right now they're experiencing about 500 private jet operations in now there this week as well as some of their airline service and so i just talked to grant this morning it's a great training opportunity for my staff we sent one guy down there last year and he kind of went down a boy and came back a man. It was it was a really good experience for him. But in talking with Grant this morning before they headed out, um, there's 100 jets on the main ramp, and uh, their their car pulling back forth to the hotel with a CSR, one of the people who rings them up. They get thirty thousand dollars a night for each one of those jets on the ramp, and that's irregardless of fuel or anything else. I got some poor guy pulled up in a single engine Bonanza and he's parked over there and he's paying $680 to park per night in a Bonanza. They shut down a runway and a taxiway and, and Grant and a lot of the guys are on that side because the regular guys are working the main ramp. Grant yesterday himself pumped 30,000 gallons of jet fuel. Um, and I'm pretty proud to say that of the five trucks they've got, they've got four Wiseman guys working those trucks and one of them, Jacob, when he's not doing that, he's doing a lot of the towing of the large jets. Um, Grant feels real good about our staff compared, and there's people from all over the country there right now. He said, we look the best. We're wearing our, they want everybody to wear the regular outfits. And we're seeing some of our customers we see coming here, like Ron shirts and stuff. So um, 
they're all going to come back men. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he, he said they got about 65 aircraft on their side, plus everything that's coming and going. Um, we've been doing some freshening up in the interior of the FBO. Um, I did that remodel of the bathrooms, which I used a different contractor. We finally got through it. And the doors were a lot of issues, and we just put uh, some stained wood doors with frosted glass in them. They look really nice. And we're doing some painting and just trying to freshen up the inside of the place. Of course, we're doing a lot of recruiting. Uh, and staffing, although we are really well staffed, the football player thing, it just continues to go on. I don't have any of the guys that worked for me last summer, but through word of mouth, I, I, I have three right now that took medicals or whatever you call it, and just really great guys. And so we're actually, line-wise, as heavily staffed as we've ever been. You're going to lose some of them because graduation, but uh, we're working on that. Our first aircraft, I'm running all the airplanes through paint, change the paint scheme. Grant doesn't like it, but anyway, <laughs> it's quite a bit different. Uh, got uh, every aircraft, when it goes into paint, it's coming out with a WA on the tail, Whiskey Alpha. The commander just officially got approved today, triple four Whiskey Alpha, which I put on a commander I brought here when I first opened, and I had to sell it for the money to finish the place. It ended up in Spain. It's been sitting in Spain for 20 years. Finally got decommissioned, and I got my end number back, so I'm real happy about that. Um, let's see, uh, stuff coming up, uh, I don't know if you know it or not, we had our first official fourth power yesterday out east of town, Winslow Tanker Base opens up May 3rd, in case you're wondering, um, and I was just looking at our earning release components, I don't know if you ever go on the, the Southwest, the SWIC site, we're sitting pretty good, it's interesting, depending on where you click around the state, some areas aren't sitting so good. Other areas like Alpine and stuff, they're they're sitting all right. More so towards Iron Springs, the Prescott side, they're looking a lot drier than us. So I just I just kind of like to get a feel because obviously I deal with it some here and I deal with it in a big way in Winslow. You know, fuel the fuel situation hasn't gotten any better. It's it's usually about three days to get fuel, so we have to kind of stay on top of things in terms of staying flush. Um, McCain Institute's Sedona Forum is May 3rd through the 5th. We haven't got a whole lot of, uh, you know, reservations for that, but our ramp has gotten extremely busy with that sometimes in the past. Of course, since he, he's passed away, it's changed some. Um, it's going to be an interesting weekend because uh, on May 4th, I uh, told, I'm letting Pocono High School have their prom in the hangar. I've let Flag High do it before, and I don't charge for any of this, just, just so everybody knows. But I told him I want a lot of chaperones. <laughs> um, any graduation, if you know, it's on the 10th. We tend to get busy with that. Um, Overland Expo it is on the 17th through the 19th of May. Um, and we do see a fair amount of activity from that. And obviously, the gas station and everything else gets pretty bottlenecked while it's going on. And one thing now that I talk about that, it's not technically your land, but you guys should block off that area where everybody's driving up over the sidewalk because they drag a lot of mud and stuff out with you. you know what I'm talking about? I do. Um, and that's actually the property that the Gentera is right. technically under their lease now. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell Rich when I meet with them. So, so, yeah, talk to yeah. Rich and see if he needs any assistance from us, but I don't want to step on any toes. By okay. Now. And the only other thing I wanted to bring up is we had to cancel because of weather, but I would really like to see all commissioners do an airport tour. And the offer has been put out there and someone in this room, uh, vice chair, we had a lovely tour probably almost a year ago. No, it was in the late summer, early fall. Uh, and I put it out at another meeting. So if anyone would ever like an airport tour, we figured it was easier one on one. Um, yeah, I'll send you an email, Council Member Harris. Um, and then if any commissioners are interested, reach out to me, you all have my email, and we will schedule a time and that tour includes everything you get to go see Orville's operation, we'll see the R station, and obviously the terminal. Um, so I really encourage you um, to reach out to me and we'll get something scheduled in. I think it's it's fun to see uh, from a different what really goes on the big picture. Yeah, it gives you a better perspective. I realize all of you are familiar with the terminal and the airline side, but to go back and see the 140 or 50 tenants and the fees and the hangers and see what all is involved with running the airport. Um, you know, honestly, the two airline flights we get a day is 
probably the lesser of what goes on around here in terms of air operations. So. I think that should be mandatory for the chairman since they have a main one since they've been on the board. Okay, he's scheduled. Do any questions or no good? Um, yeah, I have one uh, more. Uh, Orville, what is the impact, if any, of uh, not doing uh, thunder over Flagstaff? Is this not? Yeah, um, uh, Councilmember Harris, Chair Waddell, this is Brian, uh, Brian Gall, Airport Director. So just a little bit of background on that. So thunder over Flagstaff, for those who may be unaware, is an annual open house that is held at the airport. Uh, but it is hosted by the Experimental Aircraft Association, which is an oh. industry and aviation community group uh, that is across the country that hosts events like that around the around the country. Uh, we were working with that group. We have worked with them in the past. It is an all volunteer effort on their end. And my understanding is that this year they were unable to find the staff on their end. It's a fairly heavy lift, uh, getting the permits ready, getting the staff ready, getting the vendors set up and things like that. So. My understanding is that they are not hosting that this year. They are looking into some options and maybe some smaller events. They can still get some kids involved in some of the flight programs they have, uh, but they are thinking about bringing that back possibly next year. Uh, but this year they were unable to uh, make that happen. So that's just a little bit of context. So to answer your question, to be totally honest, um, it I don't have to take as much uh, Tylenol that day. <laughs> um, I mean, we've done a, let's say roughly, three to 500 gallons of ab gas for all the young eagle flights. Uh, we obviously have to move things around and make accommodations and whatnot. Uh, I hate to see it go away because it's the only, I hate to see it go away from a uh, publicity for the airport type of function because it's the only time a lot of people get to see the rest of the airport and what's going on. But it's gotten bigger and bigger, you know, so I don't get city staff in trouble ever. I'll just kind of say it like it is. <laughs> so imagine that. But anyway, uh, it's gotten quite large. It's a huge liability for the city. Last year, there were some dogs inside the fence and one bit a child and the people ran off. And I don't know what came of that. But, you know, I, everybody came in through the gate because I wanted to move away from where they were so they're coming in down at, at, at my other facility the peabody facility and i'm like great am i going to get sucked into the litigation because they came across my leasehold so you know maybe it'll come back i got to tell you years ago because it's moved around some was military appreciation day and some things like that i would love to see something out here maybe not so grandiose like during the week during the uh, festival of science something like that or something we could do in the hangar whatever still try to get some things to come in but it just is it was a huge undertaking and um you know it's kind of a thankless job for the city thankless job for us <laughs> um I, i'm sorry it's gone but i didn't i didn't nobody's told me it's gone so i, I heard something i read something but nobody's actually come to me and said hey we're not having it but i guess they're not having it did not put in an application today yeah they, they were kind of running out of time it's, it's all guys my age older guys and they you know it, it, the problem is like a lot of things we're seeing today in the community is it's hard to get the younger people engaged and that's what need, needed to happen and we're certainly um if the event does not continue on um as an airport as orville said it's a great kind of open house and get children into aviation it's a good military show so as an airport um if it doesn't continue we may add something on festival of science something to open up annually to the public because it certainly had that value i think okay. the, the big plus is introducing the kids to aviation pre airplane so but, but you know they could still do that I mean, they they, could, so they could do yeah. young. They could pick any weekend, whatever, and do young eagles flights. They don't need the the open house to yeah. do that. So that would be. Thank so. you. Yes, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to unless there's any other questions for Orville. Okay, we're going to move on the project and grant updates. Who's doing that? Adam Yali will present it. Those airport program is over. Next slide, please. 
Uh, first off, uh, Council Member Harris, thank you for coming. Chair, Vice Mayor, or Vice Chair, and rest of commission members. My name is Adam Miali. I'm your programs manager. Um, I apologize for not being there. I got under the weather this morning. And so um, I'm doing this remote, but I look forward to uh, attending it at our next one. So please bear with me and I'm gonna turn my camera off and then we'll just kind of jump in. I only got a couple slides here. We've had a lot of activity um, as it pertains towards our current uh, capital type projects over there at the airport. Um, these projects are funded through our CARES grant um, that we received and we are doing a big push right now to make sure that uh, we get as much of this done as humanly possible. Um, as it stands right now, it looks like we are sitting in a very good place as far as um, drawing down uh, that grant to zero or near zero. So without further ado, I'm just gonna kind of uh, jump in a little bit here and, and go through some of these projects. The first project you'll see on the screen here is our air airfield maintenance phase four. Uh, this project was um, a combination of both uh, work on the uh, air side as well as land side. Uh, the airfield maintenance phase four, we were able to uh, refresh all of the pavement markings on both aprons. So that would be the commercial and the GA aprons that uh, we were able to do that before the winter time. Uh, we were looking pretty rough on some of our paint. So I'm glad we were able to get that down the second component to this particular project is um, you are all probably very much aware of our light plants that we have in our employee parking lot. Um, this project will help um, uh, eliminate the need for those portable light plants. We are putting in three uh, um, lights, like street lights in there, and they will be dark skies compliant. That work will be starting on Monday, uh, the trenching for that particular project it's moving along nicely we're already at our midway points from a financial standpoint and they are uh, scheduled to be complete uh, on time next is our uh, fence repair maintenance project this project is sitting at approximately 98 um, percent i am going to be uh, performing a punch list on friday and monday we are uh, like i said we are going to be issuing a substantial completion letter this project was the entire perimeter um, of the airport um, around the um, uh, runways taxiways and basically the perimeter fence this project consisted of retying all of the fabric onto the poles making sure they were secure replacing damaged sections as needed pardon me for just a moment pardon sorry about that i had a cough um, also with our barbed wire, uh, making sure all of that was in compliance as well. So that and and that project is right at about, I'm calling it a 98%. Uh, that was a very successful project. We've already gotten a couple um, out of boys with that project with some of our partners with TSA and FAA. So we're glad we got that one through. The next project is our terminal maintenance phase one. Uh, this one is uh, a lot of behind the scenes type work. We redid all of our flat roofs with a new membrane. We were having a lot of roof leaks. And as such, we had some ab abatement we had to do for mold. And that work is pretty much, we're, we're winding down on that. As well as this project also had the eight entry doors into the terminal. Uh, we were able to get that um, all um, complete as well as we added the vestibule entryway, the carpet we replace that as well so now as you leave take a look at them they look great next project is um, our terminal parking lot maintenance this one's getting ready to kick off on monday as well this project is primarily composed of two components two major components one is the terminal parking lot the larger or the old parking lot as some affectionately call it um, what we're doing there is we're doing some asphalt patching as well as asphalt seal coat uh, we did find out that per the funding guidelines we weren't able to redo the entire parking lot um, as a whole it was not it would not qualify for that so we are doing some selective patching on that particular project and we will seal coat it uh, and following that seal coat it will all be restriped the second component to this is the um, um, rental car ready lot you'll notice there's some large cracks in there so we are going to correct those and seal coat that 
as well as on the other side of the terminal towards the west where our some of our TSA friends and admin park. We're going to be putting a seal coat on that. And one component uh, that many of you probably are aware of is the blue gate has been down for some time now. Um, you'll notice there's a new gate there. Um, the gate actuator and controllers are going to be here next week. So we are redoing the blue gate as well as the approaches. We had issues uh, historically with our loops that detect vehicles. Uh, they would break from the winter. So we are going to be replacing that with concrete and embed those loops into the ground. So that's exciting. And all of these projects I'm explaining today, we should be done uh, first part of June, first week of June, and with punch lists to follow thereafter. Next project is a very large project. That's going to be our fire sprinkler replacement project. Um, this is more of a uh, scored very high on our matrix when it comes to safety. This particular project uh, will replacing the old original uh, fire suppression system we had at the terminal. We did find some uh, failures in the line over the years and we had to repair them at a very high cost. So what we are doing is we are now putting in a whole new system. This is a dry system. Uh, this system will um, basically should last us another 40 to 50 years. This is a nitrogen based system. So the lines are empty, it fills up with nitrogen, which when those pipes get cold and hot, um, just through normal wear of the, uh, the facility, um, you'll get condensation in there and condensation and uh, steel pipe don't really react very well. So that's some of the, the crux of the reasoning why we were having so many failures with the old system, but this system is going to be fully replacing that. Uh, that's that phase one that we're looking at. Phase two was some assessments that we had done um, as far as part of the project. The first part was a lighting um, assessment. So we um, worked with a design consultant on the current system we had and asked them for recommendations for future projects. Um, and that uh, assessment went well, as well as our, uh, we had an ADA assessment of our terminal um, bathrooms as well. That project is complete or that phase is complete. And then the phase three is the drywall repairs um, as needed to install the uh, fire suppression system. You'll also notice that uh, inside the terminal is getting a complete fresh coat of paint, um, top to bottom within the terminal. Uh, that's exciting as well. We're also replacing some of the stained or damaged ceiling tiles where, where appropriate. And uh, one final element is with that phase three is our wayfinding signage. Uh, we are updating that to our current brand standards. So that is moving along very, very nicely. And again, that's gonna be done first part of June. We've had terminal lighting indoors. I mentioned on that phase two uh, that we had an assessment done. Uh, we were able to um, <clears throat> go ahead and move forward with ordering replacements. We affectionately call the lights uh, candy canes. They were the, they look like a street light uh, <clears throat> that was hanging off the terminal walls. We had some issues over that over the years just to the due, just to the sheer weight of those um, fixtures. And we had some, a lot of maintenance issues with them. So now we're going with full LED that is dimmable. So of the original 17 candy canes, only 10 were remaining at the start of this project. At the conclusion of this project, all 17 will be back up with LED lights. Um, we also looked at doing some terminal flooring repairs. Um, we had put that project on hold due to funding, as well as hangar and ARF roof repairs. Um, those were also put on hold for the time being. Um, before I go to the next slide, we're just going to look at some pictures. Do we have any questions on these projects? I must be talking. Too oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, can I go to the next slide, please? Oh, thank you. So uh, what we what we have here is just a simple collage of some of the projects that I just explained. Um, in the up, we're going to go from left to right. So let's go in the upper left hand side. You'll notice a couple of elements with this picture. Uh, this picture will show or shows uh, the new alignment of the sprinklers and the sprinkler heads uh, within the terminal, as well as you may look, if you look closely, you'll notice two different colors on that wall. 
believe it or not, uh, the original paint is like the lighter paint. Uh, just over the years, it just uh, needed to get refreshed. So that's part of that refresh and that repaint that we're doing inside the terminal. I will also note that all of the exposed trusses uh, will be wiped down and all of the black hardware will be touched up as well as part of this project. The next project to our right, which shows that's the new blue gate. Uh, there's no operator in there cur uh, currently. Uh, like I said, it should be here in the next week or two, uh, but that's our new blue gate. We are very excited to get that back in the operational side of things. Um, there will be some uh, concrete leading up to and going away from it. Uh, we think that'll give us a better longevity and decrease the maintenance uh, of that particular facility. The picture in the upper right hand corner shows the new sliding doors as well as the new carpet within the vestibules. Um, we did go with a, a, a taller mat on these particular on this particular uh, carpet tile and the hope is to kind of get some of the salt, the dirt uh, to drop out prior to coming into the terminal. Um, I will say our um, our team that helps us vacuum and clean, keep everything tidied up, they're real excited about that particular project. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll notice um, a new desk there. This is in the American office. Um, their other desk uh, had failed and fall, fallen off the wall. So as part of this project, we went, went ahead and removed that. They're getting fresh coats of paint on all the walls and new ceiling tile as well. Um, we're really happy with the direction that this is going. Uh, this is near completion as well. The lower middle is just more of a, a longer distance where you can kind of see the runs of the new uh, sprinklers. Um, again, much needed. And then, believe it or not, uh, in the lower right-hand corner, we finished putting in the water, water bottle filling station and new uh, ADA uh, compliant drinking fountain and literally as soon as the plumbers were done packed up their tools and walked away people were using it so I think this was a much needed improvement uh, to the facility and I'm excited to see it put in we're not quite done then there uh, we're going to be doing some uh, some cleanup in and around that area but uh, those are the projects that I have right now uh, if there's any questions feel free to yell them at me Are there any questions for? I have a question. Adam, it's Oral. Yes, when sir. You're doing the concrete for the gate. Were you able to get into that budget? The concrete for the walkthrough area there. You know how it's all cut out. Yes, sir. The answer is yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Hope Great question. That. Thank you, Orval. Can I add one comment? Sure. So Adam talked about the water bottle filling station. I walked by it just before uh, coming up to this meeting, and it's got a little counter that shows how many water bottles it's replaced by linking to the refill. And I think, if Adam is correct me, I think it's been right at a week since we had that installed, and there are already upwards of 150 or 160 water bottles that have been taken up. Is that inside security? No, uh, we already had one inside security. Okay. The drinking fountain outside of security security was an older model that did not have the filling station, so this replaced the one outside of security. And is that all filtered water? It is. Nice. Yeah. Most colors can drive people up and use water fountains anymore. I saw people today. I mean I people use water refill, but water refill, I think I thought water fountains. I saw yeah. two people using that today. They always cringe when we grab some. <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks Adam. Good report. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Communication and business updates. Thank you, Chair. Um, for our communication and business updates, the first one we are going to cover today um, is our proposed air carrier incentive policy. This policy is going before council on May 7th for approval, but I wanted to bring it to the commission ahead of time um, for any feedback you may have. Um, air carrier incentive policies are very common in the industry. Most airports have them. Um, and what they do is they make 
it more attractive for an airline to come. Airlines are looking for what can be the lowest cost. Um, so being able to offer incentives uh, makes it more attractive for a new line, a new airline to come. It also helps them as they put their money forward to come into the market, not as much revenue coming in, um, balance that out. And so creating a policy will make us more competitive um, to airlines. And our policy as we'll go into it is scaled and very comparable to regional airports that are our size with our service. Um, the policy was revised based on guidance that came out from the FAA um, on December 2023. So it's still pretty new guidance. So we're excited to get it out and utilize it. Once we go through, you'll see that it's a tiered policy based on service frequency. Um, and it's also categorized to income incumbent, which is our current service right now, which is just American Airlines, versus any new entrant carrier, which would be any other carrier since we just have American Airlines. Next slide, Missy. So our incentives for a daily new entrant carrier, an example of this, and this is just an example, um, which isn't going to happen because Southwest only flies 737s and we're not quite there to accommodate just yet. So that would be a good example would be for Southwest to come in and if they're offering daily service. So that would be every day. The first year we would waive their landing fees, which is a dollar nine per thousand pounds. Um, and for March, based on Americans, their landing fees were about ten thousand dollars, what it looked like. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and then we would waive the office, the ticket counter and the gate rental would be waived. And then we would also put um, $50,000 of marketing assistance towards the airport and the destination. So we would market the new airport, the new destination, so we can fill those seats on the new on the flights. The second year, it'd be the same. We'd waive the landing fees, office, ticket, and gate, and we would offer up to 25,000 in marketing assistance. And that would again be for a new carrier offering daily service. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the FAA has all these rules about, for example, like you bring their FBO in, we're supposed to have the same rent as that, and all that kind of stuff. When it comes to this, you have to offer the same incentive like you have let's say a couple carriers that are wanting to come in here um one for one reason let's say is more attractive to our market versus another are you allowed to offer the incentive to one and not to another are you allowed to adjust the incentive or we does can it have to certainly be? adjust the incentive and we'll put legal is working through our document and we'll put right. lines like that but the faa is that it does have to be open to all so that's why it has we, to be a level playing field. It has to be a level playing field. Yeah. So that's why we have our incentives and they are tailored and tiered. And that's very common across what you see. Right. But yeah, we would open in every incentive set that you'll see. Um, we'll kind of have an example of what it, we thought through, what instances of carriers mm -hmm. and what we could have. So tier wise, I don't know if you're about to show that, but just Real quick, when we had Horizon, the first year, and that was the year we did the station, it was going really well. Second year was a lot more dicey. They dropped down to one flight a day. And, you know, I'm not even sure they came every day at one point and everything. Um, but they basically were getting the same incentive, which really didn't seem fair, to be honest, because they didn't live up what, to what they originally promised. So does that they give guidance on this? Like all of a sudden they cut back the schedule or something? Yep. And Misty, if you want to go to the next slide. Thank you. We'll have our tiered and then also in our policy. And once the policy, I didn't want to have the policy printed out since we're still working through legal right. and all that. But once the po policy's finalized and goes through council, we can share it in our next meeting. Okay. Um, because that also includes that if they've discontinued service within 24 months, they're not eligible for incentives. So we wouldn't want someone to come and leave and come back and get the incentives. So for less than daily new entrant carriers, so an example of that would be um, 
sun country, which is in the mid, is it coming here? So that's what we're going to use as our example. Um, for sun country would be they kind of do a lot of casino charters on the East Coast, but they're not always flying every day. Um, so if they were, if it was flying once per week, they would get the 25% off of landing fees, the 25% off of gate, and then their marketing fund assistance would be the 15 and 7.5. And then we go for twice per week. It's that 50% discount. Their marketing is 25 and then 12,500. Three times per week would be 75 for both years. And then that 3750 and 1875. Uh, and then as long as that they're more than four times per week, that would get that up to that 100% um, of fees waived as well as that 50 and 25. And Claire, I'm assuming that all these incentives are based on what other regional airports are offering. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, um, I was, and it's been a little bit challenging since this guidance just came out. So there's not a ton of airports that we can pull from, um, but through going to conferences and making connections with people, they've been sending me their policies. And I was looking at one from Lexington um, that they just published yesterday. They're larger. Their marketing funds are 100,000. Uh, Columbus, in South Carolina, they start at 150,000. So ours is scaled very comparable um, to what we do. And right now, um, we have an empty office uh, and we're not getting any revenue. Uh, and so we're really, this policy will make it more attractive for an airline to come and better connect our community and hopefully provide more service. Have you gotten any feedback from actual airlines saying, hey, if you had a policy, we might consider. Um, we've met when we've met um, with Breeze, we've met with United. Um, they know that this is in the works. Um, since the new guidance just came out, most people are kind of on hold and re redoing there. So I think it gives us a little benefit um, that we have ours up and coming and ready. It should be ready by May 7th. And by the time we go to our conference that we'll talk about a little bit later, we'll be able to say that this is our new air care policy. But this is very comparable to something our size. Um, we can only, it's a very generous um, okay. package. Sure enough, I had one comment to that. Sure. So um, Claire talked about the marketing assistance funds. And one thing that we, talk to air carriers about in our conversations with them and also at the conference we attended last summer is there a, the uh, FAA allows two different kinds of support from airports to air carriers, one being marketing assistance, the other being revenue guarantees. And so the ones we spoke with all prefer the marketing assistance over the revenue guarantees because that helps promote the longevity of the route, whereas revenue guarantee might help if they had a challenging year, but it's not going to make it sustainable in the long run. So that's why we tailored this to focus on that marketing assistance trying to make sure it's a successful route by getting the word out and then travel opportunities available. And that could be both here locally and at whatever the destination city uh, they might be coming from is so we can travel both directions. Sounds good. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Ryan. Next slide. So this would be an incumbent carrier increasing pre-existing service frequency. Um, so this would be American. Um, adding additional flights to Dallas-Fort Worth uh, or Phoenix, but we can't have the size of aircraft can't be reduced because we don't want a reduction in seats. Uh, with the capacity increase has to be at least 75% and the fees would only be waived for the increased service flight. So it wouldn't be the one flight to Dallas right now, but if it was that second flight, then that would be what the fees would be waived. So can I ask a question? Sure. Thank you. When United came in, you know, as most of us know, you know, prior to that, we had service to Phoenix. United came in with two flights a day to Denver. All of a sudden, Americans do two flights a day to Dallas, which is great. And then even that last summer, we had three and three, right? Then United goes away, and now we're back down to one Dallas flight. And our hope is... Is there anything punitive if you, you know, you, you're going to sit here and give them, okay, you know, because if history tends to repeat itself, let's say United comes back in and now all of a sudden America ramps up, something changes and now they're cutting it back. It just doesn't... 
you know, you're giving them incentives, you're waiving fees, so they're coming in here at a reduced operating cost to offer more service, which obviously is benefiting the, the community, it's benefiting me when I'm selling more fuel, whatever, you get more fuel flow fees, et cetera. But then all of a sudden, you know, the other carrier decreases the competition and they decrease it. How, how do you how do you handle that in terms of an incentive? Well, so oh. I mean, I know the incentive goes away, but I'm just saying. Do you think maybe that we could talk about that once you have the thing completed? Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? That might be well, better. food for thought. Yeah. Yeah. Because we kind of, you can go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, yeah, they would lose the incentive. Yeah. But it's really challenging for us to go back. I don't know that the guidance we received from the FAA shows any way that you can add fees to penalize someone who. Yeah, I get service. that. i just just curious yeah. because I feel like in the past we've done a, a really good job of trying to bring people in here. And like I said, for example, the horizon thing in the second year, by no fault of ours, they expanded service and they didn't have the aircraft necessarily set to cover it in other places. We took the brunt of it. But we're going to use those marketing funds and we're going to ensure that it's a successful route and that it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But we'll certainly, we can talk more about that when okay. it is. And I would love your input because you, these are all things that we've thought through, um, but there's certainly things that come up. But it would be a legally binding agreement with our grants and contracts office. So if they discontinued service, that would reflect on that. Sure. If I could add, um, or well, it's a it's a good question to ask, and I know it's one that council will ask, and we'll be prepared for that. Um, it is so hard to get second service, and airlines just cannot make a lot of promises. Um, one day things are going well and the next day they don't have a pilot or they don't have a plane. So what we what we try to do is just to get as consistent of an agreement as possible. But if they decide, hey, I'm going to do two flights to Dallas and then, you know, three months from now I'm only doing one. We really don't have a lot of say in that. Um, and quite honestly, the there's a lot of um, airline carriers that want to go to cities that are very um, they can adapt and they can pivot. And so we're going to have to do our best to be able to do that, or we won't ever get service. And we also don't want to be known as the airport that you don't want to do business with. So we will definitely talk about that at a um, in more detail once we, we get through this. And each contract is always a little bit different. Um, they're going to ask us things that, you know, maybe another airline might not um, be expecting. I know when United came in, um, it was a requirement that we put that, I think we call it the muffin monster in, and um, is that what it's called, Brian? <laughs> and um, they brand, needed to... It's technically yeah. called a refrigerator, so that's yeah. where the uh, waste it from air to the lab is, part. Uh, lavatory waste. Yeah, is. and they required that, and, and then we also had a stipulation where we needed to be able to offer that for those longer flights. So at any rate, it's just always an ebb and flow of what what's going to happen and who we're working with. The point is, is to try to have the best relationship possible, continue that relationship, fill those planes and to have our patients be able to rely on on flights. So um, definitely it's just a it's just a hard one to always predict. And, and we do our best to try to stay um, in a healthy partnership. Thanks. I, yeah, if I can respond to that, Heidi, I, I totally get that. I understand that I'm not going to be known as the punitive airport or something, but um, I don't, did Horizon precede you? I can't remember how long you've been in this position now. Um, what was the question? I'm sorry, Orville, did the- Were you in your position when Horizon was here? Um, no, I was not in my position yet. Um, Barney had just joined the city and a week after they had left, <laughs> so. Poor Barney had his work cut out for him. And I get it, things change, but you know, also just like on our side, fuel supply, equipment, staff, um, you know, it's just, that's just what I'm saying. I, I get it, they change things all the time. Like they just recently changed, I think the first light to 5 a.m. or some horrible time because of the time change, which means I got to bring people in even before that in case they need fuel, no guarantees there, but, you know, it's just it it doesn't just impact you. It obviously impacts the other people that are supporting these services. And then when they just like pull stakes and leave, you know, you're sitting there with leases on trucks and extra staff or you've got, you know, we 
we were selling more fuel north of Phoenix than anybody when United was here, pulling a lot of fuel out of Long Beach and stuff because the Phoenix rack couldn't keep up with us. And that doesn't happen overnight because they have to go in and adjust allocations and stuff. And I, I, I'm just saying there's a lot of logistics involved. I know we don't want to discourage anybody, but I just, the horizon thing got super abusive in the second year, and I'll just leave it at that. It wasn't it wasn't good for the city of Flagstaff or anybody else at the airport. Thanks, Marvel. Yeah. Um, I do want to be cognizant of time and keep moving forward because right. I want to get to Brian's, um, which is the most important part, Brian's presentation. So I see that Commissioner White um, has their hand up. Yeah, I was just curious. I know you said that we don't have the capabilities for a 737 to land here right now. Um, have we done the work to figure out what that's going to cost? And, and if we move forward with that, would, would we be more competitive to, to get more airlines into Flagstaff? Um, that's kind of a question, Colby. Just think of, we have certainly looked at that and worked at that, our hold room size. Um, oh, Brian's going to go. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Commissioner White. It's not the uh, air side facilities that are the limiting factor for 737s, it's the capacity of our TSA screening checkpoint and hold room. We have looked at that. We have applied for grants to expand those. We do have some numbers. Maybe that's a conversation for a future agenda item. Uh, but so far, we have not succeeded in securing funding that is eligible for those improvements. Thanks, Brian. Next slide, Missy. Um, and then this is the incentive for an incumbent carrier adding a new route. So that would be an example would be if American wanted to add a Dallas flight, American wants to add a San Francisco flight, we would waive those landing fees for six months for the nonstop service. And then we would offer $10,000 in marketing assistance. And then that was the last slide I have if there's any questions. Um, but again, we have about eight minutes left and I wanna be able to get to Brian's. Okay, let's let's move on to Brian. Oh, I'm sorry, I had a few more things. Um, and this will be 30 seconds. Um, we can do our air service attraction update. We can certainly move that to next week. I did want to touch on this because it's important to keep our meetings going. Um, attendance reminders. So we need four people for a quorum. So we need to be respectful of everyone. I ask that you do respond to my email and you let me know which way you are attending. We encourage everyone to attend in person, but hybrid is also an option. Um, if you are unable to make a meeting, just let us know. As long as you let us know, that will be an excused absence. If we have two absences or we don't hear from you twice, um, we will move forward um, to council that we would request um, that your position be vacated and that it fills with someone else. And that's just to be considerate of everyone's time. And so we can actually meet. And then 10, 10 is gonna be our cutoff time. So if we don't hear from you and we're missing someone, uh, 110. 10 minutes in will be our cutoff time um, that if we don't have a quorum, then we will call the meeting. But again, please try to be responsible uh, and res respectful of other people's time. If you say that you're going to make it, uh, we hope to see you there. And that's the end of my presentation. Thanks, Claire. And now. OK, one more slide, please, Missy. This is quick. Uh, this will be quick. So I have three slides here and really I wanted to give a very quick Oh, it looks like um, you might have a question. I can't see who that is on my screen. Robbie? Um, yeah, uh, hi, I have a question. Is, is now a good time to ask for an agenda item for next time as to an update on hangar and sun, say, sun shade usage? Uh, uh, we can add that at the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. So I wanted to give a very quick update on the airport budget. So this is a primer that's going to lead to some future discussions. So the airport is an enterprise funded city, meaning we generate revenue that is then put back into this facility. Uh, the goal for enterprise funds is to be self-sustaining, meaning our revenue fully supports our operation. Uh, but that is not necessarily always the case. In fact, in the case of the Flagstaff Airport, it's something that has always been one of our goals we've never quite gotten to. So uh, that's something we're still working on. So for one-time revenue sources, we get Grants, Adam discussed some of those. We've done some of our maintenance work with, some of the construction we were doing on capital projects like the snow removal building. Our ongoing revenue sources are things like leases, 
uh, for the hangars and shades and from our airline tenants and other businesses that operate at the airport. Also license agreements and fees, uh, things like parking fees, for example. Um, our operational expenses that, that those go to cover are our staff time, includes airport staff, so both the airport administrative side plus our operations and firefighting staff, uh, the law enforcement support we get, our parking enforcement support we get, um, utilities for all of the businesses and buildings at the airport, as well as maintenance and our ongoing contracts for things like landscaping, custodial, pest control, et cetera. Uh, we also have capital expenses. Those capital expenses include both um, capital projects, meaning a new item, and capital renewal. So it'd be heavy maintenance items that extend above just being maintenance by themselves. Those projects are developed in conjunction with our airport master plan. Uh, that master plan was last updated in 2018, and they get updated about every 10 years. The projects in that plan go into our capital improvement plan, which is a running five-year list of the projects that we're working on. Uh, that's done in conjunction with both the FAA and ADOT. And those are usually through federal, state, and or local funding, usually in the form of grants. Uh, next slide, please. The reason I bring that up is because some of the challenges we see with that are the lack of funding and inconsistent funding. So as Orville mentioned, we see highs and lows in terms of everything, fuel flows, employments, the number of carriers that operate here. Uh, and that leads us to some critical capital projects and no funding identified. Things like terminal expansion, uh, which would directly address things like the whole room and the TSA checkpoint screening capacity. Those don't score very well for federal grants, so it's been a challenge to find a funding source for that. Um, improvements to parking lots. Some of our parking lots are ineligible. Some of them are a little bit, they just don't score well for those grants again. Um, other things like uh, generally those more capital type improvements around the facility can be hard to find grants to fund if they're far enough away from the runway. General rule of thumb is the further away you get from the runway, the lower your project is going to score on the federal funding matrix. We also have critical operational expenses, which can be hard to maintain sufficient funding for. So that's things like sending staff to training, making sure that we keep the facility maintained as best we can, and heavy vehicle maintenance. Or we'll talk about the snow. We have a lot of pieces of snow removal equipment. We have three fire trucks. Uh, just the tires alone on those can cost several, several thousand dollars each. So keeping that up is a, is a heavy lift. Um, next slide, please. And so where that leads us is possible solutions. So fees, permits, things like that are what we're going to be looking into, we're trying to make sure that the airport fund is in a healthier position moving forward. Some of those fees we're considering are things like landing fees, uh, updating our parking rates and potentially adding parking permits, um, charging for our security badging, which is something that most airports do that we have not traditionally. Um, possibly hangar development. You can see on the excerpt from the master plan on the right, we show future hangar development in a number of spaces. That can either be done by the city if we take a loan from the general fund and directly get the revenue from that, or we can open it up through a competitive bid process to allow developers to come in to provide some different service, and develop those properties, and then pay us uh, a ground lease for it. Um, Council Member Harris mentioned the 31.45 acre development. That's across the street from the airport, but it is airport property. So in about five years, uh, we should be seeing some revenue from that source. And then again, the big ticket item is additional air carriers. So the efforts that Claire's going on are attracting additional carriers, even without some of those fees that we wave up front, it increases our parking, it increases our fuel flow, and then eventually we see those rent and those landing fees. That's really a big ticket item. And then rate adjustments. So periodically we go through a, hang, uh, a rate and charges study on what we charge both our ground leases and our hangar and shade rents. So those are all things we're gonna be looking at. So that's just a little bit of background, knowing that in the coming months, we're going to be bringing these to you as we have some ideas about ones we'd like to move forward with. And uh, that was the end of that presentation, which I think, unless anybody has any questions, um, I'll turn it back over to Chair Waddell. Um, but happy to have, answer any questions if anybody has them. Anybody have any questions for Brian on that brief budget update? Thanks. We're looking forward to hearing more about that stuff. You have a lot of challenges to have. Oh, here's the fact. <laughs> Just one thing to mention too. I don't know um, I didn't, if I didn't catch it, Brian, but we will be doing more expansive or kind of more specific presentations on budget over the next probably few months, bringing some more of these topics into a little bit more more discussion. Great point. Thank you, Missy. Okay. Next slide. I think this is. Uh, probably a good time for future agenda item requests, even though we didn't have a slip for it. 
Probably, I, do you want to make a agenda request? Anyone may want to make And it looks like Robbie uh, is no longer with us. And so we don't have a quorum anymore. Um, so we do have to wrap up the meeting. Okay. Next meeting mm -hmm. is nice. And as mentioned, please notify Claire about attendance so we can ensure we have a quorum because it could be another interesting meeting. And I appreciate everybody's attendance. Any questions before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Can I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Uh, I second that, uh, Commissioner White. Okay. All in favor of German, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thanks again for um, joining the meeting. See you next month. Period. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.